What we're going to be going over here is an example where we're going to have an account balancing balance sheet and income statement error. Now those are accounting errors which are offset or corrected over two accounting periods. And for example, we're going to look at accrued interest revenue. And this is where uh, we're going to be looking at here where we're going to have an overstatement of accrued interest revenue. That is in a 1231X1 accrued uh, we accrued interest revenue of $8,000 in year X1 here that actually applied to interest revenue that was supposed to be earned or realized here in year X2. And at that time, we debited interest receivable in year X1 and we credited interest revenue. That is, we realized all the $8,000 in year X1 here on our income statement here of interest revenue that was really supposed to be applied here to year X2 here in our income statement. So we recognized the $8,000 worth of interest revenue a year earlier here. So this is going to be where we're going to have this accounting year and it's going to be calendar balanced here. So uh, two cases that we have to look at here. When we discovered the year in year X2 here, uh, we you have to look at here, case one here, case A, where you assume the books are not closed here for year X2. This is where we're going to make a correcting entry. And then uh, case B here. Now, if the books are closed here for year X2 here, and we realize this error here uh, in year X2, we make no correcting entry if the books are closed because the error would be counterbalanced. That is, revenue would be recorded for interest receivable here in eight, of $8,000 in year X1 and it would have already increased our net income here uh, for $8,000 in year X1 and also that net income remember flows into retained earnings here so in year X1 we actually recognize the our, our retained earnings would be correct here because we recognize the $8,000 here a year earlier and then we wouldn't have to make any entry here to uh, for year X2 because we actually recognized all that $8,000 here. So books are closed in year X2, make no correcting entry. But now let's assume the books are not closed here. So this is what we have to do. We have to take, uh, we're looking at our interest revenue here and our income statement here for this accrued interest. And then we have to look at how it affects our return earnings here and our balance sheet here. Again, return earnings is part of equity here. So the correcting entry is this. We would credit or increase our interest revenue here by $8,000 in year X2 for making this correction here. But at the same time, we would be debiting our retained earnings by $8,000 here. We'd be re reducing our retained earnings here by $8,000. So it looks a little unusual here, but what was happening with this counterbalancing error here is because we recognized the uh, interest revenue a year earlier here than we were supposed to, we would have to remove it from our retained earnings here. But by going in here and making this correcting entry here by crediting our interest revenue here by $8,000 here in year X2, uh, for the correction here. We, this Remember, this interest revenue is going to go back into retained earnings and increase our retained earnings. So we're taking out the $8,000 that we recognized here that was supposed to be realized in year X2, but we're bringing it back in here by crediting or increasing our interest revenue, which is going to be close to retained earnings uh, at the end of the accounting period here in year X2. So and then for B here, just remember we recorded it in year X1, this interest revenue. So for year X2, we did. if the books are closed here in year X2, we don't have to make any adjusting entries because we've already realized the interest, uh, the interest revenue here, which increases our retained earnings. So then let's just go back down here and go over the rationale here for this correcting entry. So here's what we have to be looking at here. Just li I listed it out in words here or in statements here so we understand it clearly here. So uh, rationale for recording the entry A here, that uh, adjusting entry assuming that the books are not closed. Again, so point one here, when, real when you realize in year X2 uh, interest, accrued interest that in year X1 that is, it was supposed to be realized here for year X2, but we realized that a year earlier in year X1, we credited interest revenue on the income statement for $8,000. That's in year X1 here. Now, the interest revenue in year X1 would be overstated by $8,000 uh, on our income statement here. So that would have been overstated here for year X1 because it was supposed to be realized in year X2. Point three here, because you did not record X, year X2 accrued revenue as interest revenue in year X2, net income here for 
uh, year X1 here, again, is overstated by $8,000, resulting in an overstatement of retained earnings for year X1. Now remember, net income here is close to retained earnings. So if net income is overstated here, in this case by $8,000 here for year X1, so is retained earnings overstated here for year X1. Okay, so that's for year X1, but if we leave everything stand as is here, and we don't make any adjusting entries here because the books were closed in year X2, you can see everything's sitting fine here. You already, uh, you even though you did it in year Earlier here, you still recognize the $8,000 here, and that would have been sitting here and be sitting in our retained earnings. Now, if the books were closed here for year X2, no adjustment is required. Uh, interest revenue of $8,000 here was recorded in year X1, as I stated here. That increased our net income. That was closed to retained earnings was increased, and the air is counterbalanced here in year X2 here. So in year X2, uh, if we just left, left everything stand as is here, we didn't make any corrections here, books are closed, then the error is counterbalanced. Even though we recognized it a year earlier here, our books here are balanced here for year X2. But it is the case here. If you do realize the error here, and let's go back up to our T accounts. If you do realize the error here, in year X2 here that you made by recognizing this interest revenue a year earlier, you still have to go in and make the correcting entries. Uh, you just can't leave it slide by and like if the books are, un unless the books are closed in year X2 or for year X2, you, you got to make the correcting entry and you can see what the correcting entry is. We, again, we credited or re interest revenue, we increased it here for $8,000 for year X2 here, the year X1 correcting entry. It sounds a bit strange here, but at the same time, we debited or reduced our retained earnings here by $8,000, only because the air would be counterbalanced. This $8,000 here that we have in interest revenue here, that this adjusting entry here for year X1, it is in fact gonna be close to retained earnings here when we close the books at the end of the year here, and that would increase our retained earnings here by $8,000. But we had to remove out this previous mistake here of $8,000. So you can understand what's going on here. Now, again, remember if you, uh, the interest revenue here was recorded a year earlier here. If the books are closed uh, for year X2, then you don't have to make any adjusting entries because the uh, retained earnings here would, be, would have been correct here. We recognized it a year earlier, but nonetheless, retained earnings would have been increased here by $8,000. But for the correction that we made here, this by making this correction here, or recognize, uh, making the correction here of increasing our interest revenue by $8,000 here for year X2, or for year X2 when we made it, we made sure that our net income was correct here for the year here by, we recognized that it was supposed to be recognized here in year X2, and that made sure our net income was correct here. And then remember, the net income being correct here for year X2, uh, with this adjusting entry, that $8,000 of net income here would have flowed in and increased our retained earnings here by $8,000. So really you have to look at what's going on here when you make these adjusting entries. You have to look at how it affects retained earnings. Either you just keep your retained earnings balanced here. You have to make sure you're not they're not under or overstated here. And you attempt to make sure that your income statement here is properly uh, recognizing any, in this case it was interest revenue, you gotta recognize it for the period here. So again, you can see the counterbalancing error here. $8,000 worth of credit here. Uh, this correction here is gonna flow into our retained earnings and credit it here for $8,000 for year X2. But at the same time, the $8,000, the adjusting entry, we debited it or we removed the $8,000 here of retained earnings that would have uh, been realized here earlier in that year X1. So that's what we talk about when we're talking about our counterbalancing error here that you have to make here. When you realize you have an error here and the books are still not closed in the year that we have to we have to make this correction. If the uh, books are closed, then 
everything is counterbalanced. Okay, so that'll summarize our little discussion here on accrued interest revenue here, uh, how it was counterbalanced here on our balance sheet and our income statement for an error that was made.